<clears throat> All right, everybody. Welcome back to another week of NFL picks and predictions. These are coming out a little bit earlier because I want to get the preview out because obviously the Bengals are playing on Thursday Night Football. So I just want to dive into it. Um, I had a decent week last week. Obviously, 11-4. and four. The Chiefs, as I'm recording this, just completed a overtime win over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to stay undefeated. So I got that one right. And my overall record, I recounted um, 89-49. and 49. Not too bad. Um, best start I've had in quite a bit, actually. So I'm proud, you know, of the week that I've had so far. But I just hope we can keep it going, man. So um, if I can get more of these pecs right, um, you know, so be it. But... Anyway, let's dive into some of the matchups, man. I'm looking forward to this week. Let's start, let's get into it, man. So kicking off things, like I said, is my game on Thursday Night Football. We got the Cincinnati Bengals heading to MTNT Bank Stadium to take on the Baltimore Ravens. So we look at the Ravens. They're coming off a huge, convincing 41-10 win over the Denver Broncos. Lamar Jackson, he was sensational. He completed over 84% of his passes. He passed for almost 300 yards. He had a three touchdowns. He broke a franchise record with his fifth consecutive 275 passing game, passing yard game. Um, and then Derrick Henry also contributed over 100 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. Uh, the Ravens' defense they struggled against the pass, you know, this season. But you know they limited Bo Nix to pretty minimal yardage. He had some awful throws in there, but the Bengals they took care of garbage, uh, or they took care of business. Um, or but yeah, they took care of business. I don't want to say the Raiders are garbage because we were only a game ahead of them. But they took care of business against a not very good team in the Las Vegas Raiders. So it's like whoop de doo. But forty one to twenty four win over the Las Vegas Raiders. Joe Burrow he threw five touchdowns. You know he Chase Brown also added over a hundred yards on the ground. Um, the defense also held strong after allowing an early touchdown. So with Baltimore's defense, they finally find some form. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, you have to look back to week five when these two teams last met. Uh, Joe Burrow threw five touchdown passes, and, uh, you know, they just dueled it out. The Bengals, they, if you recall, they looked like they had the game one, and then obviously a costly pick where Marlon Humphrey picked it off. Um, and that just was game set match. But I just don't know to make with this Bengals team, man. I mean, that game just still, it just still irritates me, like, that we lost that game because it's like first of all that was winnable. Second of all, it's like these are the times you gotta win these games, like these divisional games, these you know important games. You can't just continue to rely, like have choke job artists. Like I said this in the post game for this video, like when they played back in week five, I said you just can't have these games where you just give it up. Like sometimes you just gotta close. Like I I I remember saying this exact thing. It doesn't matter what the details of the game are. It doesn't matter what anything is. Just you just have to find a way to win. And the Ravens, their defense, like I said, it's suspect, but it's still finding some form. And you know, last week should definitely give them some confidence, especially on a short week. Uh, Chase Brown had a you know, like I said, they're gonna have to contain him. He he had over 150 yards, uh, you know, all purpose yards, I should say, because he had 107 on the ground. Um, 120 on the ground, rather, sorry. Uh, but this is just AFC North football, so you can expect to be close, especially considering, you know, last year these teams faced off in Week 10 of, you know, and then everybody knows what happens. Joe Burrow hurt his wrist, and then the crowd, again, like 15 to 20 fans were chanting F Joe Burrow the same day he hurt his wrist, and, you know, Roquan Smith kind of flexing how the defense won the game and got the... You know, how, how things like that tend to happen again when you play the Baltimore Ravens. So, just a lot of controversy that happened that day. So, it's like, uh, do I, do you, do you think that it's, I mean, you look at Joe Burrow, he was pissed off after the game. Um, even like, you know, he, he, he understands, you know, what the task ahead is. But this Bengals team, it's a team sport, like, at the end of the day, guys. Like, Joe Burrow can have all the stats, all the gaudy stats. But it's a team sport. And right now, the Ravens, they just look like a better team. I'm not going to lie to you. They're slight favorites in this, you know, crucial AFC North matchup. And this is really a game the Bengals have to win. You know, they play the Chargers next on Sunday Night Football. They have to win this game. You know, coming on. They have to go in there. They're going to be 10 days removed from either a loss or a win. And 
unfortunately, guys, I just don't see how we win this game. I hope I'm wrong. Like I said, I think that we definitely can put up a fight and everything. But I have to go with the Baltimore Ravens in this one. I just think that they're the better team coming into this game. And, you know, I'm facts over feelings, guys. So you don't have to like it. I'm not asking you guys to like it. Whether I pick the team or not, that doesn't mean I'm not rooting for the Bengals. Of course, I'm rooting for them. I will always root for them. But, you know, I, I have to be honest. This is a facts over feelings type of, you know, channel. Um, So... You know, that's just how I roll, man. So I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens to unfortunately drop us to four and six. They just look like the better team coming into this game. Next up, this is we got a Germany matchup here. We got the New York Giants taking on the Carolina Panthers. So we look at the Giants. They're, they're trying to bounce back from a tough 27-22 loss to the Washington Commanders. Daniel Jones, he finally threw his first touchdown pass at MetLife this season, but he also lost a huge fumble. And then you look at the defense. They struggled to contain that offense, uh, Washington's offense. I mean, a lot of defenses have struggled. Um, they, sc I mean, they scored on five of the like the next six drives after punting, after the opening possession. So that was just that's just that has to be a big red flag for New York's defense. And then we look at the Panthers. Um, I mean, they beat the New Orleans Saints 23-22. Um, Chuba Hubbard, he was a star. He scored two second half touchdowns. He got the game winner as well. Um, you know, they gave up 427 yards, you know, in total, I believe on defense. So that's also a red flags, but you know, Carolina's defense, they were able to hold Derek Carr and hold off the saints. Like, you know, a lot of teams outside of the first two games of the season were able to do. Um, so both teams international setting, I, I don't know. I think that the Giants defensive consistency is going to give them a slight edge here. And I'm actually going to pick them to win. You know, I, I, I think that, um, I know I have the Panthers background here, should have had Germany. But, uh, you know, I'm going to pick the Pan uh, the Giants to actually win just because I feel like they have the upper hand in terms of defense. I think that he can they can cause, you know, Andy Dalton some problem or Bryce Young some problems, rather. Um, so, you know, it's going to be an interesting game. Uh, Cuba Hubbard is definitely going to get the rock a lot more. Uh, but I think the Giants come out ahead. So give me the Giants here over the Panthers. Next up, we got the New England Patriots taking on the Chicago Bears. So the Bears have just completely got mentally fractured the last two weeks after that Hail Mary. Um, yeah, they, they had a rough week nine. They lost 29-9 to the Arizona Cardinals. Their offense managed just 75 total yards in the second half. Caleb Williams, he, he, he completed 11 out of 24 passes. Chicago's defense got completely overwhelmed. And then Arizona, they got 200 yards on the ground. And then you look at the Patriots, they fell to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Drake May had an incredible, uh, you know, last play of the game. Especially, you know, he, he threw a picket that ended the overtime period, unfortunately, and he had three turnovers. So he's still going through some of those growing pains. But New England's defense, they did their best to keep him close. But ultimately, dude, it just comes down to the missed opportunities that they had. Um, their missed opportunities, their mistakes. And then you look at the Bears. I mean, Caleb Williams, yeah, he's been a little bit off the last two weeks but I think this is just an opportunity for him to get it right because I think you know the Bears they play at home they're having so they've shown some flashes you know especially at home so I think they get they, they have a slight edge over the Patriots here the Patriots are still trying to find some stability with their quarterback and with their team I gotta go to Chicago on this one I'm gonna go to Chicago I think that they just come home and they bounce back after two str just tough road losses and I think they just get back on track here I think the Patriots are a team that they got to get it back on track against, and I think they're going to do it. Sunday matchup here. We got the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Tampa Bay Bucks. So the 49ers are coming off a bye week. They're well rested, and they're, you know, they could be potentially bolstered by the return of Christian McCaffrey. Um, then we look at the Bucks. They just lost, unfortunately, 30 to 24 in overtime to the Kansas City Chiefs. Baker Mayfield had a strong game. He had 240 passing yards, two touchdowns. Tampa Bay's defense, they were not able to contain Patrick Mahomes. But again, who is? Uh, in the, especially in the clutch moments. I mean, in overtime, you just knew he was going to drive down the field. Um, San Francisco's got a more balanced roster. And, you know, I think that they, they should be able to take control, especially with the Buccaneers. They're dealing with a little bit of inconsistency. But, you know, the Bucs are the home team here. Um, so they definitely, you know, have that edge, of course. But... I do like how Baker looked last game. I feel like he, you know, was able to do a lot to keep the Bucks like in overtime and into the game. Um, so that gives me a little bit more confidence to pick Tampa here. But I don't know. San Francisco just doesn't strike me as get as much of a threat this year as they were in previous years. And that's why this is actually my upset of the week. I call this an upset only because 
Obviously, San Francisco has been you know more consistently there the last couple of years, and Tampa hasn't really been there since obviously you know Brady retired. So I'm gonna go with the Bucks here. Um, I think that they pull off an upset here over the 49ers. The 49ers are just not. They don't strike me as big of a threat as they used to be. That could be the injuries. It could be just not gelling as much. You know, Brandon Ayuk is obviously towards ACL. Debo Samuel is still finding his, you know, stride. So, you know, I'm going to go with the Bucks here. I think that they are just too good to fall to 4-6 and six here. Give me Tampa. We got a divisional matchup here. We got the Denver Broncos taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. So we look at the Chiefs. They just beat the Bucks 30-24 to in overtime. Patrick Mahomes. He had a minor ankle injury, but he came back and, you know, kind of shades of the Super Bowl 57, uh, where he, you know, obviously hurt his ankle against the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, then you look at, you know, Mahomes. He connected for three touchdowns. Two of them went to their new, their newly acquired target, DeAndre Hopkins, and then Kansas City was just able to stay undefeated. And the, their defense also, they were able to hold Tampa Bay in some critical moments other than that last drive. And then you look at the Broncos. I mean, they just got absolutely smacked by the Baltimore Ravens. Uh... Bo Nix, he struggled. Denver's defense just could not do anything against Lamar Jackson and that balanced Ravens passing attack. And Kansas City's versatility here, man, I think this, the Chiefs should just, they, they should handle the Broncos here. I think that, you know, you, it's divisional football, so you never want to completely count on Denver. And also, they did upset the Chiefs. Um, I'm trying to remember, was it two years ago or was it last year? It was one of those two years, but they beat them in, in their place. I think it was last year, but... This is, this is my lock of the week. You know, T Kansas City, they're undefeated. They're at home here. I just don't see how they drop this game, especially they've just owned the Broncos in recent years. Give me, give me Kansas City to get an easy win here. This is my lock of the week. Next up, we got the Buffalo Bills heading to Indianapolis to take on the Indianapolis Colts. So, let's look at the Bills, man. They come off a win over the Miami Dolphins, 30-27. to Josh Allen, he orchestrated a second-half comeback. Three touchdowns. Tyler Bassey missed an extra point, but he got a 61-yard game-winning field goal. Um, so that was incredible. To, that was incredible for them. And then, obviously, the Colts, they they just struggled offensively. I mean, you know, Joe Flacco was supposed to give him a little bit of a spark with Anthony Richardson not out there. But, you know, they were able to only manage, unfortunately, three offensive points. And they got the, the Vikings defense. I, I mean, it could be the Vikings defense being legit, but... Man, it was just that was just that's that's a tough one. Um, yeah, I got I I have to go Buffalo here. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think that Buffalo's offensive firepower they just look like a complete team, man. And I just think that they just have a significant advantage here uh, on the road, and just a lot of depth that can you know just cause Joe Flacco some havoc and cause that Colts team some havoc. So give me the Bills in this one. Interesting one here. We got the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Washington Commanders. So we look at the Steelers. They're coming off their bye, and they're looking to address some big red zone consistency or inconsistencies, rather, that they've had, especially on the offensive side. Um, Pittsburgh's got a strong defense, so that could really make it physical. And then you look at the Commanders. I mean, they're coming off a tough 27-22 win over the Giants. Yeah, it was close, but, you know, it's divisional football, so that's just what it comes down to. And then Jaden Daniels, he led a productive offense. He scored on five of its six next possessions after the opening punt. And then, you know, I they were just able to ice the game. And Jaden Daniels, he he hit, uh, I forgot who it was, but I think it was Olamide or whatever. Just, I, I, no disrespect, I just forget how to pronounce his name. But I don't know, man. They're going to, the, the both teams are looking to address some issues. I guess Washington is maybe closing it out a little bit early. I mean, they have their defense is kind of, I guess, lapsed at times. Um, not saying they're not a good defense, but they have lapsed at times, which has allowed opponents to maybe stay in the game longer than they should. And then the Steelers, I mean, they got, they're becoming a high-powered offense. I'm not ready to say that they are just yet, but they do look like a playoff team to me. Um, they, they're six and, yeah, six and two. They're, this is going to be a brutal stretch for them because they get tested with four division, is it three, they play three straight divisional games, if I'm not mistaken. They play the Ravens and then they play the, is it? Yeah, they play the Ravens, then they play the Browns, and then they play the Bengals. So it's like three straight AFC North games. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tough for them. Uh, but you know, it's gonna it's 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 gonna test them. Um, and I think that's what this team needs. You know, with Russell Wilson finally out there, and you know, especially against you know some good defenses, uh, or good or I guess talented defenses and pass rushers. So Pittsburgh strong defense against Washington's high powered offense is gonna be a good matchup here. 
Um, the moment the momentum that Washington has, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a slight advantage here, but I think the Steelers do cover. I think it's a three point spread. Last time I checked, so I'll say Washington they win by one. Maybe they get a game winning kick or they just hold the Steelers off in the last drive of the game. But I think it's gonna be a good game, and I think that this can go either way. Uh, but I'm gonna roll with Washington to actually beat the Steelers at home here. I mean, could I see this going either way? Of course. I mean, Pittsburgh's defense, T.J. Watt's a one man wrecking crew at this point. I mean, this dude can impact a game from all ends, and I just hate that he's in our division, obviously, but he's the best defensive player in the league, and I don't even think it's close. Um, yeah, I'm a Bengals fan, I'm saying that. So I'm going to go with the Commanders on this one uh, to beat the Steelers, but you know, Steelers, they keep it close. Next up, we got a pretty easy one here, in my opinion. We got the Washington or the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, the Jaguars, they look competitive against the Eagles, but that was in the second half. They were they kind of took their foot off the gas. I don't want to downplay their mini comeback, but the, the Vikings, they snapped a 21-13 win, or the two-game losing streak with a 21-13 win over the uh, the Colts. Their defense balled out. They limited Joe Flacco to under 200 yards passing. Sam Donald was also effective. He had a couple costly mistakes, um, you know, against the Colts, but they, they were there was a point where I think they both went pick for pick for pick. So... They just had a, the Jags just had a sluggish start. In my opinion, I just... Like, Trevor Lawrence, he did lead a comeback, don't get me wrong, but I, it was more so the Eagles, I think, taking their foot off the gas, and, you know, unfortunately, Trevor Lawrence just couldn't get it done here. I think Minnesota's defense is finally finding their form, and I think that they're going to cause Trevor Lawrence some issue here. I'm actually... I, I, just, I just think the Vikings are the better team here. I'm going to go with the Minnesota Vikings here. They look like the favorites. They're trying to keep it going, keep pacing the NFC North, the toughest division in the league. Even, yes, the I know the Lions crushed the Packers, but all four teams, if you ask me, are still very much alive in that race. So I'm going to go with the Vikings to pull off a win over the Jaguars. Another divisional matchup here. We got the Atlanta Falcons taking on the New Orleans Saints. So the Falcons are coming off a 27-21 win over the Dallas Cowboys. B. John Robinson, he had... I mean, Kirk Cousins, yeah, he threw three touchdowns, but it was mainly about B. John Robinson. He had 145 yards. Uh, and, you know, Atlanta's defense, just they weren't flashy, but they did hold Dallas to just four for 18 on third and fourth down. Um, and then Dak Prescott obviously got hurt in that game. Then you look at the Saints. They're coming off a 23-22 loss to the Carolina Panthers. Alvin Kamara had 215 all-purpose yards, and they still lost. So you got to feel for it. Some of those guys, man, especially him. But New Orleans has just struggled to close out games. They've not made any key like stops, or they've not taken advantage of any key opportunities. And Atlanta's balanced, pos- you know, their, their offensive attack is just. I think that they're just gonna get it done here, um, especially with the Saints' late late game issues. I think it just gives the Falcons the adv- advantage here. So I'm gonna pick the Falcons. They have some success. Had some, they've had some success in New Orleans. I think this is. Pretty much the same thing that happens. I th- I just don't see the Saints getting it done here. Um, and even you look at the locker room. I mean, the Saints, there were a couple of Saints players. I know Michael Thomas, he's not been playing, but he called out Derek Carr. I think another player called out Derek Carr. I saw Cam Jordan also tweeted like, oh, we just lost to the Panthers, uh, which is kind of fun- funny. Um, but, you know, you, it, it, it just isn't a good, not a good season for New Orleans, man. It looked promising at the start. I didn't think it was going to be good at all. But, you know, I was... I, I was ready to change my mind after the first two weeks, but it just looks like they're coming right back to you know, what I thought they would be. So I'm going to go Falcons here. They just, they're just a better team here. They should win. 405 slate game here. We got the, an interesting one here, actually. Um, I guess kind of interesting because, you know, the tight, I mean, the Titans are not as bad as they're, I mean, they're, they're not great. Don't get me wrong, but the Titans, they defeated the Patriots. Yes. 2017 in overtime, but Tony pa- Tony Pollard had some rush. He had some clutch rushing, um, and that defense, the way that they did contain Drake May, does give me like a little bit of like okay, maybe they can maybe hang and maybe cause some havoc. That's why I say it's interesting. But Herbert's got. I mean, Justin Herbert. I mean, they they dominated the Browns. Uh, thank you, Los Angeles. Justin Herbert. He got sacked six times, however, and that's what makes me think that the Titans' defense can really take advantage of. Uh, but he threw a sixty-six yard touchdown to Clinton Johnson. And I think that was the, that was pretty much the biggest slash play. Um, yeah, Herbert's resilience here, the Chargers' defensive prowess, I just think that that just gives them the upper hand in this matchup. So I'm going to pick the Chargers here, but I think it could be a pretty close game if you ask me. I mean, I think the Chargers definitely um, 
they're they're definitely the better team, but I'm gonna roll with I'm gonna yeah, so I'm gonna roll with the Chargers, but I think that the Titans could keep it maybe semi close. Next up, we got the New York Jets taking on the Arizona Cardinals. So we look at the Jets. They're coming off a strong 21-13 win over the Houston Texans on Thursday night football. Garrett Wilson made one of the greatest catches I've ever seen. Um, and two just amazing one-handed touchdown catches. And Aaron Rodgers, he found his rhythm in the second half. He targeted, he targeted both Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams. And the New York's defense was just amazing. I mean, they... They got eight sacks on C.J. Stroud. I mean, that Texans offensive line is just terrible, but you got to give that defense a lot of credit as well. But then you look at the Cardinals. They they dominated the Bears 29-9. Kyler Murray, he played as a, he played more of a supporting role um, in that matchup. I mean, James Conner, he rushed for over 100 yards. Arizona's defense recorded six sacks, and they held Chicago to under 80 yards in the second half. So both defenses are actually in pretty good form here. Um... The Jets may have the upper hand in terms of like the the, the, the strength, I guess, but I don't know. I, I, I do like that Arizona offense a little bit better. Um and I think that, you know, James Conner can have another good game here. Because Joe Mixon also I'm not saying James Conner's as good as Joe Mixon, but Joe Mixon did have a good game. So I think that Jets defense is a little still vulnerable. It was a good win on Thursday. They're coming off a ten day, you know, rest, obviously. Unfortunately though, for the Jets, I just don't I just don't see them winning two in a row here. I just I'm gonna go with the Cardinals here. They're the home team. It's another situation when in doubt go home team. But I think that it could be a could be kind of a shootout, but I think both offenses are gonna play well. But Arizona's defense, I mean, holding Chicago to under ninety yards in the second half, I mean that just that gives a lot of confidence, you know, for me in that defense. So I think it's gonna be a like I said, a a back and forth game sort of, but I'm gonna go with Arizona on this one. Another divisional matchup, one of the best rivalries of all time. We got the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Dallas Cowboys. So the Eagles, they took their foot off the gas a little bit. They got a 20-23 win over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jalen Hurts had 290 y- 97 yards, and he also threw for three touchdowns. Saquon Barkley had 159 rushing yards. In Philadelphia, they were able to build a lead, but Jacksonville was able to creep back into the game, partly because their late game turnovers. And the Cowboys are also struggling because they just they're they're on their third consecutive loss. They fell to the Falcons. Their defense has just been absolutely porous. They've allowed a hundred and four points in the last three games. That is just an abomination for the Dallas Cowboys. And you know Dak Prescott's hamstring issue is gonna be a it's gonna be it's gonna be costly because he's gonna be out the next couple weeks. And it, it is concerning. And I think that you know injuries are just gonna continue to mount for them. As if I'm being honest with you, I just don't know. Um, it's just not looking good for the Dallas Cowboys right now. And Philadelphia's consistent performance, I think that just makes them the favorites in the East. But I think that, you know, obviously they can Washington can keep pace with them. But I think Philly might have a slight edge right now. But it's gonna be interesting to see how they match up again. But I'm gonna go with the Eagles on this one. I just don't think the I don't think the Cowboys are, you know, ready for this. I mean, I think Cooper Rush is come is gonna start. I have no idea, but yeah, I'm going to go with the Eagles here. Um, I, I'll, I'll see when I believe it for the Cowboys, but the Eagles just look very confident coming into this game. Obviously, they beat us by 20, and then obviously Jacksonville by, you know, it was 22 nothing and a half, but they did creep back into the game. It was kind of the opposite of when they played us. When, when we played them, it was a close game in the first half, and then they just blew us out in the second half. So, yeah, I'm going to go Philly in, in this one. Game of the week easily here. We got the Detroit Lions taking on the Houston Texans. Yeah, the Texans are coming off a loss, a 21-13 loss to the Jets. CJ Stroud, he got sacked eight times, and he just could not complete passes under the pressure. Joe Mixon had a really good rushing performance. Um, Houston's offensive line woes are really concerning here. And then the look at the Lions. They're coming off, they're coming off you know, a, 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 pretty, a pretty gritty win over the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, it was just a huge rain game. Jared Goff, he managed the game efficiently. The Lions defense scored a huge pick six right before the half. I don't know what Jordan Love was thinking on that one. Uh, but the Lions, they just got it done. And it was just a complete team effort, you know, on, on all sides. And I think Dan Campbell just has this team prepared. And, you know, that was really when the game switched. And, um, you know, Jameer Gibbs had an, a, a great game as well. Um, it was just... A, 
great showing for the Dallas, for, for the Detroit rather Detroit Lions rather. Um, yeah, Houston, Houston's offensive line woes they were pretty evident, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think that you know Detroit's balanced offense and they got a solid defense. I just think that they have a they're in position to win this matchup. And you know what? I always say when in doubt go home team. To be honest with you, I don't have much doubt. I'm gonna go with the Lions. I, I honestly think that they're just right now. Much, they're just coming into this game a better team. I think their defense is going to try to test that Houston offensive line. And C.J. Stroud has just not been great the last few weeks. You know, he's he's a remarkable talent, and I think that he's going to be a great quarterback, and he already has showed that he can be. But right now, he's just not looking that good. I think they're relying a lot on their run game, and I think that Detroit knows that. So I think they're going to be ready for it, man. So I'm going to go Detroit on this one. Um, Texans, unfortunately, they suffer... Yeah, another loss on, you know, this one on their home floor, or home uh, home field, rather. So, give me the Lions over the Texans. And we wrap up this week with an interesting one here. We got the Miami Dolphins taking on the Los Angeles Rams. Let's look at the Dolphins. A 30-27 to loss to the Buffalo Bills. Their defense just completely collapsed in the second half. Tua and his returning did actually play pretty well, but Miami just could not stop Buffalo scoring drives. And that was just costly and they obviously lost on a 61 yard game winning field goal and then you look at the rams they got a 26 to 20 win over the seattle seahawks matthew stafford he threw an amazing ball for the game winning touchdown the rams defense also intercepted geno smith twice in the red zone one was a 100 yard pick six and you know the rams yeah it's home field advantage i know that the rams they don't they're not known for a great fan base and whatnot but you know i think that this is just another thing where they just they take care of business here. Honestly, I think that one thing I'll say is like Miami always gives Buffalo a good fight. Like I, I'm not saying that they you should downplay what they did last week, of course, but those games are always tight, and that just like I said, that's divisional football. So, I mean, you don't really want to harp too much on that. It's mainly about I mean, you gotta you gotta think about the Rams. You know, they're obviously they also edged out their division rival, and the Seahawks are they're they're pretty good. They're they're reeling a little bit, you know. They started three and zero, now they're four and five, but they're still a decent team. And I think, you know, especially in that hostile environment, that's a good win. But as far as this one, guys, I think that the Rams, you know, with their um, just the momentum they have, and the Dolphins are kind of just reeling away. And yes, Tua could have a bounce back. I'm gonna go with the Los Angeles Rams to 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 just win it at home here. I think that they just come into this game a little bit more hungrier, and I just think that they just look like a better team right now. So. I'm going Rams on this one, and those are my Week 10 picks. Thank you guys for tuning in. These should be some exciting games. Um, I may change some of them if I have a change of heart, but as of now, these are what I'm thinking, and and I'll just tell you why. But I appreciate you guys tuning in, man. It means a lot, and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe. I'll have these out every week, and um, yeah, I'm gonna have this out. I'm gonna have this out as it's Tuesday as I'm you know gonna have this out because. Trying to get that preview by Wednesday done for the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens. So, you guys have a good one, and let's have another great week of football. Take care. Peace.